The Dakota Access Pipeline. It's been in the news lately, but uh, no one seems to care, so it must be pretty important. I mean, it was either this or Amy Schumer, and, you know, I still need to work up the endurance that's kind of like training for a big prize fight. You know, you're not ready yet, kid. So I did some research on this Dakota Pipeline, and I hope nobody throws a hissy fit about it. It's not really a controversial subject. You're either really pro-environment or pro-dick on this one. I mean, you could say fuck the environment and fuck the corporations. Fuck everyone and fuck everything! But then what would you do? I'm not even saying you have to give a fuck about either side. Fuck everyone and fuck everything! If I actually gave a shit about the environment, I wouldn't smoke, I wouldn't drive, I wouldn't throw beer cans everywhere when I'm drunk, when there's not a garbage can within a 10 foot radius. I'd be out protesting with these smelly bongo drumming fucks. I'd give myself like a native name, like, I am Red Fern and shit, I'd piss off the natives, they'd be like, that name is of a rival tribe, and I'd be like, oh fuck, I'm sorry, I can't do this. <laughs> Want to know the best way to help the environment? What? Kill yourself. Oh! Seriously, there's there's really no better way to save on energy and resources. It's like a million less cigarettes, a million less gallons of gas clouding up the atmosphere, and we wonder why NASA gave up. NASA would be like, uh, the stratosphere is currently too foggy to navigate. Conditions have halted further human progress. If only they told the people on the Challenger in 86. Anyway, I was just looking for the basics on what this pipeline would entail. And I'm reading all these facts, like, hey, you know, straight, this sounds legit. And then I have this second barrier in my mind called intuition. This is this is something that few people have, a really underrated mental instinct. Where even though you accept facts into your head, there's this other layer where goes, uh, where the fuck are these facts going? Yeah, this is true, but this seems to be going in a certain direction. It's one of the oldest tricks in advertising, you know? You should buy Crest because 9 out of 10 dentists recommend Crest. Did you know that? Yeah, I also know that Colgate is half off this week. And of course, like an idiot, it took me slightly longer than it should have to read the header of the website, you know, the thing that should have kind of just popped that at me. And it's owned by Energy Transfer. Energy Transfer is a Texas-based oil company that has essentially taken over massive tracts of land in several states stretching from North Dakota to Illinois to amass this huge digging project. And the website shares interesting facts like, oh, dig pipelines are the safest, most efficient way to transport energy resources throughout the U.S. because there is less spillage. Yes, that may be true. There is considerably less spillage with pipelines than if you were to transport the oil by rail, what we have traditionally done. But that's like saying carbon monoxide poisoning is the safest way to kill yourself because of less spillage. <laughs> <laughs> now, when I first heard about these protests, some part of me went, huh, oh, a pipeline, oh shit, we can't let this happen. We can't just let corporations come in and, f and fuck up our- What the fuck? <laughs> Oh yeah, there are already 2.5 million miles of pipelines in America. You would think that for these big businessmen, it'd pretty much be mission accomplished by now, you know, but what do you know? Greed just doesn't seem to know when to quit. If oil was somehow renewable, like electricity, I wouldn't give two shits who's getting rich, you know? And sure, if these oil companies are saying that they're going to seek to make the pipelines as safe as possible, I believe them on that front because they do not want to be held accountable for work-related accidents. They don't want to have to settle out of court for some union cocksucker who wasn't wearing his helmet and hit his head on a pipe on purpose, then make him a millionaire for pulling switches for 30 years. Oh, I was drinking oil? I thought that was chocolate from Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory! You're still working a shit job. You were off the day that G.W. Bush came over to visit. You missed the team photo. Your life sucks. Fuck the little guy. I give one point to the corporations on the safety issue. You understand that's not the big picture here. On the other hand, if there is a leak in the pipeline at what any the point, fuck? couldn't the results of a leaky pipeline be like catastrophic as opposed to just a highway fatality? Nah, what am I thinking? Massive oil spills have never happened. Why am 
I thinking? I'm just a silly sheep. I'll just go back to grazing on my pesticidal meadows. Now, for, for the protesters, specifically the Sioux tribe, whose land is being infringed upon, this isn't a question of how safe the pipeline is. But the pipeline's safe. It's foolproof. Yeah, there shouldn't even be a fucking pipeline. That's not the question. Obviously, the purpose of the pipeline is to ship the Earth's blood that we are draining out of her like water from a coconut all over the world faster. If you're gonna reduce our planet to a fucking uninhabitable garbage dump, it doesn't fucking matter if the fish are fucked. That's just collateral damage. It's like saying, hey, I'm gonna drive drunk through a crosswalk when that preschool lets out, but that's okay. My car is equipped with these cushy airbags, so no harm done. But the natives don't even care about that shit. They'll say some hippie shit like, oh, mother nature. But that's not their main concern. Their real beef is that you're building on their property on their, with their fucking huts or whatever they make out of sticks and cloths that are pretty cool. You're, you're infringing on that. Even if you, if you came to my house and told me, hey, we're gonna come and take everything you worked for and turn it into a county fair, and I know you were, well, that's bullshit. Why the fuck would you, oh, it, and then they bring out the kids with leukemia. I'd be like, fuck those kids with leukemia. That's not a valid reason. You know, get them away from me, you know, bald-looking Caillou-ass motherfuckers. Even if it's for the most noble cause, I'm not giving up my land for shit. Now, in this case, it's for no noble intention. It's not to get us out of a depression like FDR. You know the song, this land is your land, this land is my land? Yeah, it didn't actually mean that your land belonged to both of us. We're not fucking married. It, it meant that this is your land, motherfucker. And over here, you see, I'm drawing this line, this is my land. But they take over with a special trick uh, I, I, called eminent domain. And I don't think it's uh, one of the 50 hot tips you want to teach your husband either. You know, do a bit of bouncing around for two, three minutes. And imagine how many kilos I am. If I slam on his tummy, <laughs> it's going to be a goner, okay? And do the same thing again. At this time, you can move it as fast as you can. When you feel like he's about to come, hang on and squeeze the top. Yes, eminent domain did help us get out of the depression, but we're not in a fucking depression anymore, so therefore there should be no excuse at all for the government or any fucking buddy to come in and take your land. None. But their excuse has always been, it's for a public service, it's for a public good to help the town out, to help get the economy going. Now, in 2005, the Kilo versus City of New London Supreme Court decision ruled that private companies can now assume the right to eminent domain for the same reason, for a public purpose. Now what that public purpose is has apparently been redefined to mean, uh... Anything! Anything! Yes, anything! <laughs> anything! 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 This lawyer in Iowa is representing like 15 farmers whose land was taken from them for this pipeline. Which would also fuck up the soil used to plant the crops and shit. I mean, you can go look this shit up for yourself. It's Unfortunately, they'll probably be unsuccessful because in America, the bad guys almost always win. Like, if this was an action movie and shit, I get it. When Harrison Ford takes a few knees to the gut, you know, a lot of bruises. Like in uh, Indiana Jones and Blade Runner and shit. He gets the shit kicked out of him before he comes back with a big wallop, you know? But he always came back with it. You, ha you have to build that tension, I understand that. But this shit has been going on for so long now that it's it's it ain't even an action movie anymore. It's torture porn. I think Rocky's dead. He, he went out just like Apollo. I can't fucking believe it. This isn't Blade Runner. This is Passion of the Christ. Go read my movie reviews, by the way, in the link below. And I'm no socialist, you know? I believe in entrepreneurship and conquest and all that medieval shit. But it's when you start fucking with people's lives that we kind of got to get the spot out on the road slow the fuck down you know because there's really nothing cool about being a businessman in America anymore maybe oil companies were cool back then when they were like single man engines back then we call them tycoons like Daniel Plainview and there will be bloods that guy was a savage man I watched that movie when I was a kid and I pointed at screens like I want to grow up to be just like him but nowadays it's like these great men don't even exist you know at least back then when someone fucked you out of your dirt some Indian chief could just point and say yo it's that motherfucker man let's kill him and they point at Columbus and shit, and then Columbus would just fuck them up and take their land. Or in the case of early businessmen, you would get tricked into selling 
it. They would try and convince you over a long period of time that giving them their land would be profitable to you and everyone else around you, which is a huge fucking lie. So when you got fucked, it was, you know, that was all on you, man. Sorry. You should have shot him when you had the chance because he was on your property. But you can't shoot a corporation. You can't shoot the government. They have no face. Now everything's disguised in smiles and handshakes and red tape and contracts. Now with the government colluding with these private companies, giving them full permission to just have a fuck fest wherever, wherever they want, you're really not given any choice. Now you don't know who the fuck you're talking to. The boss is up in his big mansion hidden away and all his minions lurk among us undetected, blending in with the business apparel and the look of death in their eyes. Because they know that all the money in the world couldn't fill the gaping hole in their chest. When you take their shirts off, there's a giant hole in their chest, like the T-1000, and it, that's just where their soul was before it left. Look, I'm gonna be realistic here. No matter what the protesters keep yelling or how many titties are thrown out or how many feathers are worn. Global warming is still a thing. It's not out of style. It's not going away. No matter how much you bully it, no matter how much you don't talk to him at the lunch table, global warming is like that freak kid that keeps bugging you that you just want to go away. He's not going anywhere. It's probably gotten so bad now in terms of just the accumulation of pollution that there's not enough time or resources in our toolbox to reverse it. What we can do about it is what the human species has always done in response to change that we find alarming. Stall. Maybe we can prepare for it. If these companies really cared about creating jobs, they'd hire people to, to do large-scale renewable energy. The pipeline is only creating 40, that's right, four zero jobs that are permanent. Those are some FDR numbers right there, folks. Look, if they really cared about jobs, they would invest in electric, they invest in solar energy, hydroelectricity. Hell, shit, we have never tried before. How about fucking human sweat? Just kidnap every person in America over 300 pounds, put them on a giant hamster wheel and make them run there and sweat in a bucket below. We'd all laugh our asses off because we all know fat people couldn't run in a wheel and they all just go round and round. We don't want to laugh. That wouldn't be my first choice. I'm just saying experiment. Trial and error, motherfuckers. Make my tax dollars entertaining at the very least. That is all I ask to feel that there is even a sliver of hope for this country. Can we run our vehicles on Rockstar Energy Drink? Fuck, I don't know. Let's try it. Create more jobs. Shit, I got all day. But of course the fossil fuel industries, they don't, they just don't care. Their wallets are busting at the seams because of how much paper they've got and they need a new snakeskin wallet. We live in an age where so many Wall Street investors, political criminals, big banks like Goldman Sachs, and CEOs like Mark Cox Zuckerberg of Facebook, who actually blocked a live stream protest, they all want this so fucking bad that we can't even say who's to blame. We don't know who to point our fingers at. So we're only left with ourselves. Jefferson would be fuming right now. He wrote the Declaration of Independence for this. Independence, Declaration of Independence. Independent from what? Independent from ownership, independent from government, independent from elitism, oligarchy. Could you imagine Jefferson's first draft of the Declaration? We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created, that they, and then, and then he has to look at that and go, wait, what, what, did I skip a word? What, what the fuck? God damn it, I haven't slept in a fortnight. Did he just leave shit like that the way it was? No, that done confused the fuck out of many a generation. All men are created. No shit, Sherlock. This is the founder of our country here. So he went back and wrote and wrote until he couldn't write anymore. And he did this because, not because he wanted to, because he believed in the power of the people to, to not be fucked. To not be fucked. And of course, at the center of the story are the natives whose lives are being affected. Big, big chief, Ugamug, I'm gonna have him squad. Oh, he big warriors, better look around. Natives, yes, they're still around, apparently. I thought they were a myth myself, like... 
like a fairy tale cr creature. Are there wizards too or fairies? Newsflash, corporate media. They are real people you're fucking with here. You might as well call this Columbus part two. And sitting on the sidelines, looking at his watch, running out the clock, is our awesome President Obama. The guy who could apparently just call off all these shenanigans at the drop of a hat. Every day now, he looks out his window at protesters like, Protesters like, you know that hope and change you promised us? Hey, do your job, maybe throw us a bone, maybe recognize that we were the ones that elected you, not your corporate interest. But then Obama looks behind him at his corporate interest like, Her lungs, and when I go in deep, it's no fucking time to run, yeah, we yawn them. Nuh-uh-uh. Yes, Obama did temporarily halt construction on the project just so those damn protesters would shut the fuck up and go home. But now that this whole shit is back on again, what, what the, the fuck? fuck, Obama? What are you waiting for? You know, you do play basketball, so you should know that what you did right there was called a fake out. He's like Frodo at the end of The Lord of the Rings, just standing over the cliff. Like, we're all just like, just destroy it! What are you waiting for? But you know. He's just gonna bitch out because he's Obama. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe, all that fun shit, all the links below. Let us create our own pipeline for this video. Let it spread far and wide across this great nation. We'll be rich, I tell you.